Good morning, both fighters, and first things first, I got my copy of The Fault in Our Stars, and I got a lovely blue J Scribble. For those of you that don't know, The Fault in Our Stars is the book that we will be reading for February, so that is a thing that is available now and you can go and buy at your leisure. This video is almost exclusively going to be a response to Sarah's video on Saturday, which, as all of you may have guessed, I sat through shaking my head, like, constantly. I wasn't so much saying it needs to be edited in that those chapters just need to be cut out and all of that stuff needs to be cut out completely. It's more that it needs to be worked into the text. Sarah, this was the only point in your video that I kind of agreed with and I thought it would be interesting to see a version of Moby Dick where maybe the whaling stuff and the informative stuff was integrated into the story in a more fluent way. Having said that, I mean, it really is just a stylistic preference and his choice to have it in separate chapters and to be quite militant about it is something I really enjoyed. So, I mean, that really is a kind of stylistic, what you want. As far as the details of whale anatomy and whaling and all that stuff and the details about sailing, there was way too much in there and it wasn't so much that I don't find it interesting because that's actually a thing that I find really interesting. It felt like it was in there for absolutely no reason whatsoever other than Herman Melville saying, hey, look what I know about whales. I know all about all of this stuff that I'm writing. I totally have authority to be talking about this. If you can't establish authority to be writing about a subject in your writing without going on about, look how much I know. As far as this point goes, surely, surely it is the author's job to impart knowledge onto the reader. And surely that is the main and possibly only job of the author. I know nothing about whaling, I know nothing about the voyage, I have no nautical expertise whatsoever. And Melville does, and so he writes a book about it, and I expect him to tell me about it. Now, I probably didn't expect him to tell me about it in the detail that he did tell me about it, but I was grateful for it. And to be honest, the only thing your criticism really is, is kind of, well, he's given you too much knowledge, and I personally don't think that's a thing. The other thing that really, really bothered me, and probably bothered me more, was the complete lack of any subtlety at all in anything. Like, it, it one time it felt like the amount that I was being told made everything really confusing to figure out what is he actually talking about but at the same time it felt like I was having everything spoon fed. Ishmael is going along and he comes to this inn called I believe it was the Spouter and the guy who owns it his name is Coffin which yeah that's foreshadowing which would have been okay it's not super subtle foreshadowing but I'd be okay with it except then what Herman Melville chooses to do, rather than let his text speak for itself, he has Ishmael go up and say, Hey! Hey! Did you see what we did there? Did you see that? Did you, did you notice this? Now this comment really, really shocked me. And not many things shocked me, but this shocked me. Like, to say that maybe Dick Spoon feeds you, I think, is kind of amazing. And I think what's probably happening is you're getting confused between the voice of the narrator and the voice of Melville, the author. All the observations you cited are Ishmael's observations, and as I said last week, Ishmael is first and foremost a reader. As soon as he goes into the spouter inn, there's a ship on the wall, and he's kind of looking at it and inferring things from it and analysing it critically. And I don't think we should assume that his inferences are necessarily correct observations. In fact, almost 100% of the time, I disagreed with Ishmael's observations. But what it did do, as opposed to giving me answers, was allow me to ask similar sort of questions, and in turn, form my own opinions and my own observations. I mean, you could argue that Ishmael is Melville, and Melville is vocalising his arguments and opinions through Ishmael. But really, any such inference is ultimately futile because, well, there's no proof. I mean, you can make propositions and suppositions all you want, but at the end of the day, the only thing that is completely true is that Ishmael is a character in a book, and we should probably treat him as such. Side note, Book Fights did another video plan this week. Perhaps we could make this week a discussion of the topics that I discussed today and that Sarah discussed on Saturday, mainly whether you think Moby Dick is subtle and nuanced as I do, or whether you think it's glaringly obvious and it spoon feeds you like Sarah does. Perhaps that's sort of something we could discuss this week, either in comments or video responses or Book Fighters in your videos this week. Lauren, I will see you tomorrow.